Welcome everyone to a casted game for Age of Empires 4 and today spawning in the northeast corner of map playing in blue we got Orangutan also known as Marine Lord playing as the English and his opponent in the southwest playing in red we've got Louis MT playing as the Malians. Welcome everyone to Floodplain that's the map for today it's a map I've never seen before. It's a custom game between these two players it may be from a tournament who knows I'm not totally sure. All I do know is that two fantastic civilizations, two fantastic players going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, two scouts going right past each other. It's not ideal for the scouting pattern, but Marine Lord going to be heading back now. Might be wondering, what's up with the minimap? It's all blue. Well, that's because it's all water. And uh, it's shallow water, though. Apparently, they can walk over it. So, no... Well, to be fair, you could get a ship or two, maybe a dock or two. But what we do know for sure is that you can walk on top of that water, and it's uh, looking pretty funky. No splashing, yes. that horse is a special way of walking through shallow waters. But what I would say is it's always fascinating to see new maps in Age of Empires 4. New dynamics, new strategies, but I mean, it's a weird one, right? Because if water is not really played upon, then it's kind of just aesthetically pleasing, I guess. But I don't know if we're going to see anything special on water or not. There's no fish at all, as far as I can see. Either way, welcome to Floodplain. English versus the Malians, a really interesting matchup. Of course, you've got the Javelin Throwers versus the Longbows. You've got the Donsos versus the Knights. You've got the Musafadi Warriors against the Man at Arms. The Malians do have a lot of counter units unique to them. Kind of interested to see how this one pans out. You've got the cow boom potential for the Malians. You've got the enclosures upgrade from the farming in the late Imperial Age for the English. You've got Marine Lord versus Louis MT. Now, I would love to say a very big thank you. For everyone who's been supporting the channel, whether it be your Twitch or YouTube, you guys are absolute legends. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The last couple of months have been absolutely phenomenal in terms of how things have been going on the growth side of things, especially on YouTube. So, you know, if you do enjoy the cast and you've watched maybe two or three of them, you think you might be coming back for more, make sure you do, you do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a thing. And uh, that's a good way to keep up with the, with the games. Now, bear in mind, my uh, kind of upload schedule is uh, usually daily, but it may not necessarily always be that way because what I'm doing at the moment is I'm focusing on making sure that every game that I upload to YouTube is a high quality one so it could be something like an interesting strategy some fierce battles some great players on show great civilization matchups good maps I you know I do cast a live on stream on Twitch these days uh, but I just want to make sure that I'm not just uploading everything so I will not be uploading everything I cast on Twitch only uploading the very best games that means that on youtube when you do click on a video of mine you can be sure it's been vetted to say hey look i thought it was a good game it's worth your time and that way you're not wasting your time watching some of the games because sometimes you know some games just over in the blink of an eye and might not be a great matchup but i gotta say this is probably going to be a good matchup because english versus malians lots on show for us today now with that in mind Whilst there is a new map, Floodplains, we do have three sacred sites. Although, actually, wait, is it three or is it two? It looks like almost it's just two. We've got one there on the right side, one in the middle. And I don't see one on the northwest. I don't know if it's bugged or there's just only two sacred sites. What we do see is a coastal trade post. So maybe trade if it goes super late game, that could be a thing. It's in the middle of the map, so pretty contestable. What we do see is the Abbey of the Kings as a landmark for the English. I love to see this landmark. We're seeing it more and more often, obviously. As the English being played this way, and the Mar Marlians getting the Mansa Quarry, no real surprises there. They get the passive gold or stone generation, depending on what you want to toggle onto. Getting a mill as well for the Calboom to set up shop. I've got to say though, this is a really nice spot for Calboom, right at the back of the TC. Um, but I guess one way to consider this is that actually, whilst it is, you know, a uh, traversable terrain on the water, you won't be able to build uh, palisades on them, I suspect. So walling up is going to be tough. For both players, so that's kind of interesting. I, I like that in a way because it's kind of like a dry Arabia, but open. And it's not a dry Arabia that you can wall up easily. You might be able to wall up small walls to your base, but nothing significant. So that's kind of cool. It also means you can't really build static defenses. In terms of uh, one thing to bear in mind, though, the English do love to get a couple of outposts on the map, don't they? They like to, uh, to get a network of castles. I don't know if they'd be able to build it on the shore, like the, the this kind of shallow water. I, I suspect you probably couldn't. But we'll have to wait and see. And here comes the English king. Almost about to pop out. Scout going the west side. Yeah, 
Oh, village coming out. It looks like it's going to be second town centre here for Marine Lord on the wood line and the deer camp and the boar. Right, that's going to scale the economy pretty nicely. It kind of makes a lot of sense because I think generally in Age of Empires 4... Wait, there's that four mills? Wow, or three mills. That's going to be a crazy mega cow boom for the Marnians. But as I was saying, um, in, in Age of Empires 4, there are certain civilizations that dictate the terms of engagement. I think Marnians are one of those, right? If they go for a cow boom, as the opponent, you've got a couple of decisions to make. Do you stay with one town center? And if you do, just know that you're going to be out eco very soon. Like, the mill is such a really cheap alternative to a town center to where you get, you know, resource generating products in the form of the cows and the cattle ranch. I mean, you know, the mills are so cheap. I mean, sure, you'd have to pay, you have to pay for the cows, but you've already got the Mansa Quarry anyway, paying it for you. And it means there's such a strong economy scaling. So if, it, as the enemy, you do just stay one town center, just know that your economy is going to be out scaled very quickly. And it means you're going to have to play a very all-in push to do some damage, significant damage. But Marine Lord's solution, on the other hand, is to go for a second town center, to try and match the economy somewhat, get a villager lead, have it a bit more flexible in terms of whether you go for food, gold, wood, whatever it want to be. Whereas, of course, the cows are limited to gathering food only. Speaking of food, or being drawn in by orangutan, Marine Lord, going to get plenty of food that way. And the second pit mine up and running for Louis MT. Dropping down a barracks and also a stable. So going to be able to get a Sofa and also Donso's English King just poking and prodding on the west side. Looks like, in fact, the Marne is maybe gearing up for some feudal age pressure. And uh, to be fair, I mean, with a cow boom up and running, the third cattle ranch is going to be a, a nice bit of food coming in for the Marlins very soon. But I, I, I like Marino's strategy here. I like the two town center. I love the fact he's on the boar. It's going to be getting a lot of food quickly. And he should be able to pump out a lot of units. In fact, he's going to do just that. Double stable archer range. With the king, it's going to be horsemen and longbowmen. Interesting play for Marine Lord. And I like this a lot because bear in mind, when you're aggressive in terms of your town center placement, in terms of how exposed it is, he's been pretty greedy here, Marine Lord. He's gone to the boar, gone for the deer camp. And... As you guys may know, recently we haven't been seeing a lot of that. We've seen a lot of players play a condensed economy by virtue of the fact that the town centers now only have 200,500 HP, but more importantly, only seven garrison or spots. So you've got to be careful where you place them, and it does invite a lot of pressure. And I think that's partly the reason why Louis MT actually committed to the stable and barracks. I mean, it could just be a response to what he sees on the other side, being two stables and an archery range. But uh, this could be an exposed area, and what Marine Lord is going to be achieving with the double stable is a lot of map positioning, a lot of movement speed, and the ability to try and force the Marlins to stay at home, and that will allow a second town center to do its thing. Now what's kind of interesting is that with the uh, excess of food that you're likely to get from the cow boom, um, especially if you're playing extended feud age, that does play into the hands of maybe going for the warrior scout. It's a unit very particular for the Marlians. Can be upgraded and just acts as a bit of a meat shield. I think it has to be considered because when you have a 3 mil kind of cow boom, you're going to have a lot of food on your hands, especially if you're not going for a castle edge behind it because, uh, you know, you're just not going to have the gold to spend 1,200 uh, food with the 600 gold to get the next stage and it means you will be left over with a lot of food, probably more than you can spend on just um, you know, Sofa. So maybe he might be able to get some warrior scouts. He's getting a scout now as we speak. I'm not so sure if it's just going to be replacing the scout he lost or maybe just commit to more scouts. We will have to see. Either way, getting some good value on the gold vein, actually. Getting, is he going to get two villagers? Should get two, actually. Try to body block there. Doesn't quite manage it there, Marine Lord. And does lose two villagers in the end. Backing away for now. But getting a lot of arrows in the butt from the second town centre. Or well, the primary town centre, I should say. Riding away with the Sofa. Horsemen trying to get some value of their own for Marine Lord. But with up to uh, you know, a decent villager lead. Can we help countering act the cow boom, which is in full effect right now? Now King possibly backing away home. Now, just to touch upon one thing, by the way. So I was mentioning about live streaming on Twitch and how my plans for this channel is to only really upload the very best games uh, that I think is, you know, definitely worth watching. 
and uh, you'll have that guarantee. And so what I'm thinking of doing is actually live streaming on a separate channel on YouTube. But it's going to be like a live streaming channel because I do live stream other games as well. So it feels like, you know, I don't really want to dilute the content on this particular channel. I want it to be Age of Empires 4 content. I want it to be what you guys subscribe to, really. Just, you know, video on demand, but high quality games only. And so I don't want to dilute that in any case. So what I'll do, I'll leave a link in the video description about my uh, my other YouTube channel, which is for live streams only, on YouTube that is. Because um, I dual stream to YouTube and Twitch, so I'll leave a link in that video description for my YouTube channel for live streams. So you can check it out there if you do want to catch me live. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. A lot of people do love just to watch VODs. Um, and of course there's no real guarantee that you have like perfect games on live streams because I just cast whatever's available. But if it's something you're interested, if you want to get, have that little bit of extra content, um, I recommend you check out that extra different channel. But of course this channel is really focused on you know, VODs of the very best games that I cast. Speaking of which, let's take a look at this. So Barracks being played into this. So Orangutan, Marine Lord... He's uh, kind of itching towards that cast age himself, which is then possibly going to be filtering into Man at Arms. And this is a lot of pressure on these horsemen. He's actually doing a lot of damage. Like, he's taking out these uh, pit mines, which is gold that he needs. The cast age now in for Louis MT with the Grand Fulani Coral. No real surprises there. Going to get extra food from the cows. Extra 20 food per minute. And he's walling up on the right side, which makes a lot of sense. So maybe he can palisade walls the... Uh, the shallow waters actually it looks like you can. I say mana tiles, but he's getting a couple of spearmen out now to spend the food. He's got a lot of food coming out here for Marine Lord. He's got a farming transition on the way as well. Kind of just as well because the deer meat and the boar are starting to get taken out. But military numbers looking really solid here for Marine Lord, I gotta say. And uh, Louis MT having to back away for now. But it's coming out to gold. This is a key issue, this west side location. It's being peppered by arrows from the longbow, which will probably get cleared up now, but it's caused a lot of idle time on that gold income. And bear in mind, when you get to the car stage, gold is what you need. You need upgrades, but you also need the premium units. You need those soffer. Now bear in mind, what's really great for Marino's position is the barracks gives him access to spearmen, but also mana times when he does get to the car stage. To be fair, he can make the mana times now if he wanted to and upgrade them. So he's going to go for the white tower, right in between... The two town centers, which I like a lot, because it's probably going to wall up to the White Tower. And it makes it a lot harder now for the Marlins then to put some issue. Oh, this is not a great fight here at all for the Marlins. There's a lot of spearmen there for the English. And sure, the horsemen are a little bit weaker than the Sofa, but those spearmen numbers looking good. It's got a couple of Donsos, to be fair, the Marlins. So it might take a decent trade, but the King getting involved. And that is not a good fight there for Louis MT by any stretch of the imagination. And now the villagers are going to have to back away from gold. And Marine Lord, he smells blood. Look at that, 25 minutes to nine. That's looking ominous. And look at the villager lead. Now, the villager lead doesn't tell you the whole picture, of course, because of the cow boom. But I can't say that fight was devastating. And things can really escalate from that kind of uh, situation. Now, considering both players are just about to get to the car stage. Well, I mean, New MT's been there for a while, but Marine Lord just gets there now. I wonder if he's going to drop a monastery to get some of those relics. Do we see a mask for the Marlins? We do indeed. But no relics being picked up just yet for Louis MT. Sofa riding on eastwards. Looks like Marino going to be walling up. Right, the White Tower working its magic, and the Palisade Wars is actually going to buy him a lot of time. Louis MT struggling to do damage, and I mean that's the thing, right? Take one bad fight, you have less military numbers to play around with, and uh, leaves. Marine Lord to be a bit more aggressive. Spearman. Oh god. The Sofa need to react. I hope Louis Empty spots this. He does indeed. Brings about. And just as well. Because that could have been a, a bloodbath. Could have been a blood in those waters. Now, the fact that you can actually build palisade walls on the uh, the waters is kind of weird. I don't really understand. I guess, I guess the main reason for the waters here is uh, possibly the trade. You could get miniature ships, technically, I suspect. But it doesn't seem like we're going to see any of that today. And the moss going down here, potentially. I mean, it probably will, right? There's just so many spin. There's not really the counter unit that the Marlins need. He could go Javan Throw. He's going to lose the Imam there on the right side. Could go for Archers, but it's always a bit tricky against this number of horsemen. But also, more importantly, the threat of the Longbowmen popping out. 
There's a lot of warrior scouts, but this is we talked about how you can use that to try and spend the food that you have, but ultimately it's not an effective unit here. There's just too many spearmen. Because ultimately Louis Empty can never really fully engage us unless yeah, to be fair, the Miss Fighter Warriors will do some work here. He's so gonna take the fight anyway with the spearmen. Sofa coming in the right side against a couple of spearmen. Trying to get wrap around here, but I mean, ultimately, does this really favor the Marlins? I'm not so sure it does. Like, there's more reinforcements coming in with the crossbows, which will get good value against the Sofa, which they're doing just now. But look at the spearmen numbers. They're ripping through, and the king does go down eventually, but ultimately, the Marlins have to retreat. And a good fight there again for Marine Lord. Not for the first time. I mean, it was a better trade for the Marlins on this occasion. Not ideal. One thing to consider as well, by the way, with the second town center, I mean, ultimately the scaling stops at some point with the cow boom. Like it just, there's only so many cows you're going to get around the Grand Filani Coral. But the second town center never stops working for you until you decide it to. That's usually when you're, you know, 200 population sometimes. Now, Marine Odd with one relic already in the bank and another one shortly on the way. Farming transition coming on in and... We talk about population efficiency, that's kind of one of the great things about the cow boom. Not only do you get plenty of food, it's also very population efficient. But speaking of population efficiency, when we do get to the Imperial Age, or if we do get to the Imperial Age for Marine Lord, enclosures will help with that. Getting some gold from the farming economy as well. Almost Fighter Warriors going to get us around on the Spearmen. I think that most Fighter Warriors will certainly win this fight, but I mean, the Spearmen will do some damage, especially with crossbows behind. I mean, think to be fair, the crossbows are going to really rip through those... Um, most fighting numbers without the crossbows that would have been a much worse fight but again most fighting warriors do win it and coming on the east side warrior scouts raiding on the east raiding on the west and Louis Empty getting a lot of value Wallalo coming up just more of a distraction more than anything because the uh, horsemen are picking off some reinforcements but walking into the white tower is never desired as the Marlins have to back away on their east side warrior scouts still roaming around but Marine Lord it's been under pressure for the last 5-10 minutes, I've got to say, in quite a big way. It looks like the economy for the Marlins have really started to kick in. As I say that though, the farming transition is probably what has delayed Marine Lord's military presence. But now that it's up and running, like this is going to kick in very shortly and that food income is going to be absolutely wondrous. Oh, he's taking a fight here, which is not ideal. Loses a scout, loses a, yeah, a couple of them actually, two of them I think. Who's fighting warriors? Running in two... I'm not... Does him? To be fair, he's got a lot of torch damage coming out of this. Trouble is, the spearmen are catching up, and yeah, the town centers don't have as much HP as they once used to. And then torch is coming up from the warrior scouts, but spearmen threatening to push that position. Oh, he's going to engage. I mean, oh, this is kind of rough. I mean, he might get the town center. He will get the town center, but at what cost? He's going to lose a lot of units. I mean, the warrior scouts will definitely go down to the spearmen. He might be able to run out of there in time. He does get out of there, but he loses a lot on the retreat. He gets the second town center for sure, but at what cost? Tear camp in the south being captured by the Marlians. We start thinking about gold situation, right? There are two tiles of 8,000 gold veins. Like I said, this one kind of suits the Marlians' position. It feels like, anyway, it's kind of on his side, just a little bit. Now, with the Todd outpost here on the right side, the Marlians looking to get security of the gold and trying to bleed the English out, but. What can happen sometimes? Well, Marino's got plenty of gold to get to the Imperial Age, so if he does do that, Enclosures then can buy him some more time. He's also getting the Network of Citadels upgrade. Can be increasing that, that, uh, that Network of Castles attack speed to uh, 20%, from 20% rather to 40%. But he's trying to torch everything down. Fighting on multiple fronts here, west side, middle and right side. Military numbers looking great here for Louis MT. And he's possibly itching towards the Imperial Age himself. Probably going to be the Fort of the Huntress as a nice static defense for him. Uh, it is going to be three relics to two. Definitely a good amount of gold coming in there for the Marnians. With two sacred sites captured as well, should be getting good gold. That's for sure. The most fighting warriors will do well to engage with the knights. Knights do back away in the end. Being pushed off of gold heavily here, Marino, I've got to say. He's got plenty of gold banked up though, thankfully for him. I wonder if he goes to the Bancha Palace. I mean, this could be a good spot for it because he needs to secure gold. And uh, whilst this isn't your favorite 8,000 gold vein, 4,000, you know, it's, it's it's a decent amount. He's going to be the Fort of the Huntress in the middle of the map, which is an interesting place, actually, because he's going to protect some food, but not 
really protecting any gold. And I gotta say, at this stage of the game, it's often the 8,000 gold veins you really want to shore up. Sure, he's got some outposts here on the right side, but maybe one of the Huntress on this 8,000 gold vein could be a good option. But he wanted to secure up the middle, which is understandable to an extent. Oh, that's a lot of spearmen chasing away that, that army. And I think Marinod should opt to go to the Imperial Age now. He's just a little bit behind in terms of food, what he needs. But look at the farms he's got. He's got plenty of them. I guess they keep back at home as well to defend the farms. So he should be nice, safe and secure. The raids just haven't been efficient here for the Malians. Twelve villagers building that fort. Marinod still hasn't placed the foundations of his Barkshire. He can afford it now. There it is. Wait, Barkshire? Okay, I, I mean, I was kind of assuming. Is that going to go for the Wingard Palace? What is up with that? Holy moly. That is not something you see every day. Marine Lord switching it up and... you yeah, love to see it. I mean, it's going to get some cool units. I'm going to check on the units, actually, because it's been a long time since we've seen this landmark. We never really see it. And boy, are we in for a treat now. Oh, this could be a devastating fight. I mean, that's not a fight that Louis Empty would want to take. The Warrior Scouts perishing in a blink of an eye, and they get absolutely butchered by those spearmen that continue the chase. Man and Dumb's coming in behind them. Range units in the form of the crossbows and long women chasing on as well, but Louis Empty does back away in the end, but not after. Only after losing a couple of units. There is that Wingard Palace. Going to be pumping out some units, possibly going for the Wingard Army, producing spearmen, crossbowmen, and a trebuchet. Wingard Raiders could be an option. Army of three horsemen and knights. Wingard Rangers produces an army of six guard, six Wingard Rangers. The Wingard Footmen produces an army of six Wingard Footmen, as the name suggests, and possibly could be seeing some of those today. Be kind of cool to do so. All right, so Marino knows about this situation, this gold being harvested, being mined, and that could be a, a pressure point. Looking to decap the six on the right side and also capture himself is Marine Lord. Now he has had the two sacred sites for a little time. Trying to get a keep on the right side. This is why I was kind of considering getting a Ford of the Hundreds a bit further forward, right? It's a, it's a curious choice. I mean, deer and food is great, but he's already got the cow boom. And so it was a curious decision to get that. Either way, it's, yeah, what's done is done and he's going to have to be facing up against an elite army. From the English, at least in terms of spearmen, the elite upgrade is not just in yet for the man at arms, getting enclosures as we speak. Keep on the east side is going to come up, but ha has been decapped the sacred site, so the time is being deactivated, and in the meantime, is going to deactivate the middle one as well. And yeah, that's unfortunate for the Malians, wasn't able to keep hold of that sacred site on the east side, and he's being pressurized. That's a lot of military units for the English. He's actually at population cap, more or less. Do we empty 130 population? That's not looking great for him. I mean, to be fair, he does have the cow boom, but I think that deficit is a lot. That second town center really helping out Green Lord's economy for sure. Adding in some Lucifer gunners, which will help, but uh, that's a good number of longbows. This is looking tricky. On the side, trying to get some raiding in with the Lucifer warriors and warrior scouts, but the trouble with warrior scouts is that it's such a squishy unit that in the late game, they just don't really do too much for you. They can raid pretty well, but other than that, it is not ideal. The elite long women use the arrow volley attack and peppering their arrows. Oh, there's a mangonel. That could be an option. There's a heavily armored unit in the form of the man at arms, but mostly infantry, spearmen, man at arms, long women. So maybe siege could be the option. Raiding on the west side with Musa Fadi warriors. Villages from farms have to back away, but he's got to keep defensively, right? And this is where it's so strong to keep the condensed economy safe and secure. A couple of static defences keeps the farms operational, gathering both food and gold, and that'll be able to supply them with man at arms, crossbows, some really premium units. Oh, Maganel heading on the east side, but there's only one, right? So he might get a, a shot or two, but ultimately, I mean, with that number of spearmen and man at arms, he will chase it down, and it packed up, and I don't think he's going to get even another shot out of this, but Musafari gunners. Behind the Musafari warriors, Maganel does go down in the end, and... I mean, this is a fight that I think Marine Lord can take and win. He's just got sheer numbers, right? And the range units take out the Musafadi warriors. Gunners aren't in good numbers at all, really. Not enough of them. Magadol there does deploy. Gets a massive shot, but is it going to be enough? Aravolu comes out there once again for the long moment. And actually ripping through. 
whatever comes out their way. 78 miniature to 16. This is a prom for Louis MT. He's been outnumbered in a big way. Does have the two sacred sites, but he's got a long time to hold on to, right? Nine minutes. That could have been a totally different story if he kept the sacred sites earlier on on the east side of the map. Mangano again does get another volley off of those rocks. But the Manor Tarms are such a strong mating unit for the English. They can you know, they pack a punch, but they also heavily armoured, tank a lot of shots from Manganels even, as we're just about to witness. But Marine Lord getting a foothold in the game and he's pushing on in. 70 military units versus 14. He just hasn't been able to pump out units. Louis MT's been raided heavily and the food income is just not there. And this is what we talk about the scalability of the cow boom. Like it's there to a point. But at some point with this number of farms from the English, it's just going to be better for them in the super late game. So it feels like the English have managed to eke their way into the late imperial age game. And this is where the Marlins comparatively struggle. Because the competitive advantage in terms of population efficiency of the cow boom in this particular matchup is less relevant when you have enclosures from the English. The units making their way across the uh, shallow waters. Going towards the outpost and also the keep. Now, does he have boiling oil? No, is waiting for the cannon placement. But to be fair, with his number of torches coming out, I'm not so sure if he get the cannon placement in time. He might just, but he can only get a couple of shots off. And it's unfortunate when you have the scenario where the keep's going to go down relatively cheaply. Really just having to back away. Army's heading that position now, but it's a limited army for sure. Cannon placement just about to come in, but just as it does, expensive, you know, he just spent. I'm not sure if he cancelled that. Yeah, he didn't cancel it. So he gets a cannon placement. He maybe gets one shot and that's it. Goes down. The timing impeccable there for Marine Lord. 85 military. His population cap. Blue MT. No such benefit. Now his economy. Struggling. Population. Struggling. Does have two mangonels, but Spearman's going to chase that down. And ultimately, I mean, sacrificing Spearman for this is not a problem. Longbows. They activate the arrow volley ability and trying to snap out as many of the Musafati warriors as possible. Spearman chasing Musafati warriors might turn around and fight this, but if the Manganels go down, that you feel like it's going to be the last bit of resistance from the Malians, because once he leaves the siege, it's, it's going to be tricky to come back from that. Producing warrior scouts, spending the food he's got, but that is not the unit he wants. Not up against this number of spearmen, and he's got a massive line of units. Bombard entering the fight here for the English and Marine Lord. Going to slowly take out the static defenses. The push continues. Oh, that's a bit of a long distance mining, isn't it? All right. Well, okay. He's getting gold at least. Uh, Marine Lord might want to actually uh, build a mining camp there. Maybe he thought he did. Or maybe he can't. No, nah, I'm sure he can. I'm sure he can, just hasn't. Either way, he's being pressurized. Warrior Scout's trying to get a surround on this, trying to get the trebuchet. Will he get it in time? He might just, although no, the uh, longbows do have the arrow volley ability. So he's peppering them with arrows. He does take out the trebuchet in the end, but he loses everything in the meantime. And this is a hard hold for sure. Bombard's still operational and working hard. Anyway, he really is long distance mining this. Marino's not spotted it. Not that it necessarily matters. I'm not sure it's going to change the outcome of the game because Marine Nord with a great economy advantage, great military advantage, and that Fort of the Huntress is going to go down. That could be the last straw because uh, Louis MT struggling to pump out units. And once that keep does go down, the Fort of the Huntress at least, then we'll go down the production buildings. And the Bombard is still operational for him. Look at the funding of the economy. Absolutely insane. The number of farms keeps the economy ticking and talking. The military numbers, they keep on coming out and Marino is fully population capped in a big way. Louis MT down to 70 population. Bombard's going to take everything in their way and I feel like there's not much more that Louis MT can do with this. Marlians tried to come up with some solutions up against the English. Did get a bit of a pushback taking that second town centre location. But ultimately the pushback from there was definitely in the favour of Marino and the English and is pushing on further deep. Once the production builders go down, even if he has resources, the Malians will not be able to produce army to counteract this. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see the tap out coming in for Louis MT soon. Does have the mosque with three relics inside gathering some gold, but there it is, ladies and gentlemen. It turns out orangutans can swim on floodplains. Marino takes the victory. Louis MT has no option but to tap out. A great game of Age of Empires 4. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Take care and see you next time.